Ubiquity Edge Switch 10X. This is not a bad little switch right here. I like these and they have a specific use case. So I'm obviously a big fan of the Unify line because of the control plane, being able to manage a bunch of switches, see them on a dashboard. And yes, these do support UNMS, but UNMS is not as full featured as the full Unify dashboard. But there are times when people want just a basic switch to do some programming. It's not likely to change. Uh, it doesn't really need to be dynamic, so to speak. So that the Unibixity's Edge Switch line is really good for that. Plus they actually support some more advanced features that you don't get with Unify with certain models of the Edge Switch, because not all Edge Switches are equal. This is a more basic version, which I'm struggling to get apart after I snapped it back together. Just don't have the fingernails for it. There we go. I already took the screws out. It doesn't come apart this easy, but I figured, hey, let's start by looking at the hardware on it. So the first thing about the Tedge Edge Switch 10X is uh, it can be a little bit difficult to slide apart. All right, but you're not usually taking switches apart. That's uh, my job. Passively cooled, big heat sink, doesn't get warm. Uh, so short answer on that, let's look at the overhead real quick. So taking a look at it here, uh, pretty simple design. This is non-POE. We do have this kind of cool the way the uh, LEDs come for the SFP ports on here and uh, just one heat sink on it. But like I said, it doesn't really get hot. And then inside of it, if you kind of look, I thought this is neat. They have a, uh, so the front lights come on right here. There's the LEDs for it. And it's actually two different separate LEDs that go into here, so this can change between the two different status colors on it. So not a lot to look at inside of them, they're pretty simple. So slide the lid back on. Oh, by the way, if you didn't notice, it does have these. So these tiny little hooks go into that little slot there. That's why when it goes together, it is really solid. So let me just slide this and slide this. It goes together easy, it just doesn't come apart as easy. And there's only two screws here and a screw on uh, each of the back sides. You got a ground, 24 volt DC. Yes, it does come with the adapter. Uh, so pretty straightforward, pretty simple, like I said. As far as ports go, two SFP, not SFP plus, and eight one gig ports that are supported on this. So uh, pretty basic when it comes in terms of features, like I said, but if you have a simple switch need and you don't need the whole Unify control plane, which that's what a few people have messaged me like, I don't feel like loading the whole Unify software. I want just a basic switch, supports VLANs um, and doesn't need some separate software. So, you know, there's a web interface directly on this and that's what this is. So uh, with that being said, let's start logging into it and dig in. Oh, we'll comment too on the back here. Easy wall mount, you know, the little offset uh, slide in uh, screws for the wall mount. So it makes it easy enough when you're putting this in like a little tight space back wall or something like that. So I like that. All right, so we're logged into the edge switch and it's pretty simple. It is not like the more advanced full feature edge switch. It does not have layer three routing capabilities uh, in this particular model. Like I said, the Edge Switch 10X is the little bit more basic one, but it does have VLAN support and support for a few other things. So we can go here and say, enable port one, isolate flow control, DHCP. Don't uh, disable the port you're plugged into. You'll have a bad time, uh, but spanning tree is on there. We have the ability to reset port link, uh, grab some info about it, if there's any port dropped and how many packets and get a little transfer notice here. You can set the mode. You can also uh, take and bind a few of these together to a lag interface, pretty simple, just by clicking that. It doesn't have, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it only supports, if we do, let's lag together uh, six and seven. So if we lag six and then seven, then we select the ports. The only option is aggregate that shows up in here. So you can edit, lag, static lag, enable STP, blah, blah, blah. So pretty basic when it comes here, but it gets the job done. It does have some of those options on there to do that. Now, right now I do have another computer plugged into port three and let's talk about VLANs real quick. Now I do like this switch, but I will admit when you're on here, it is more difficult compared to the Unify line to set up VLANs. This is one of the reasons I don't push home users to the edge switch line. I think they're a great product or solid, but this causes a lot of confusion when they are trying to figure out how to do this. And what we have here is one is the trunk port, and then we're bringing all the VLANs in, and then this is the default VLAN, but we've excluded port three, and that's what my computer's plugged into. And by excluding port three and then setting VLAN ID 50, calling it VLAN 50, setting it to 
tagged on this, excluded from these, and it automatically looks like it's going to be excluded based on the lag, and then untagged on port 3, this now brings VLAN 50 to port 3 and gives my computer this IP address. So you see my computer now has 192.168.50.102. And if I move this over to port 2 on the switch, so it's plugged into 3, just move it over to 2 here. Make sure I gotta wait, make sure my computer drops the connection. So when it, all right, now it's gonna DHCP and ask for another one. And now this one is all and then all again coming over here, which actually the native network is what it's gonna provide on there. So now that my computer has another IP address, we'll switch back over to here. Do the IF config. Just thinking right now. It's got an IP address, IF config. Now we have 192.168.3.142 by moving over versus we had the uh, 50 address previously right here. Now, the reason I bring this up is this is like one of those things that people want all, uh, is to know how to set up VLANs in this, take a lot of questions. And like I said, it's not difficult if you know what you're looking at. They have documentation on the uh, website how to do this, but it is different versus we'll pull up the Unify just so we have a direct comparison because this is what people ask about all the time. So right here is the port uh, in my studio switch that the system's plugged into. Let me move it over so you can see better. So it's plugged into this port right here. And this port's just empty right now, but if we wanted to change this from all, and we are on port three right now, I would just change it to 50. There's no tagging, untagging. That's happening. It's just happening behind the scenes and made really intuitive here to then tag this VLAN to uh, this port. So if I wanted to make uh, port two equal VLAN tag 50. I just hit the pull down in there. And of course you then can do some test profile. And this is a lot of our lab stuff. That's why you see it in like our uh, YouTube demo video I have set up in here, the uh, storage 10G. I could bring that right over to here if I wanted um, just with clicking it and not have to worry about trunking it between all the lines and choosing the trunk and choosing a tagged and untagged, uh, for, you know, all that fun stuff. All right, back over to the edge switch. Can you SSH into it? You sure can. Let's do that real quick. So we'll go over here and uh, do that in the menu. So, okay, do have it turned on already. Uh, management IP, it does support putting the management ID in a different VLAN in case those are wondering. So if I wanted to put the management to grab it, but grab VLAN ID 50, I could do that and make that my management VLAN. It does support UNMS, SSH servers turned on, uh, web server port 80 and 443 secure, that's on there, IPv6 support that's there. Switch settings, it does have jumbo frame support and a couple different options for the spanning support. One of the other things I thought was kind of neat over here on the tools, they do have the Mac table, a discovery, so you can discover other things on the same uh, link with the ability to ping some addresses. So a handy little utilities, they have them built into the interface. And finally, let's SSH into this. UBNT at 192.168.3.184. And we are in. And now, like I said, this is still not as full featured. So some of the extra features you may see in the more powerful uh, line of edge switches aren't there, but we do have quite a few different options and things we can do inside of here. Um, to configure the switch. It has a configuration mode, uh, restore defaults, reboot, blah, 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 a lot of the other things in here. Um, trace route to network hosts and a few others. And I'm not going to dive deep into the command line in this particular video. It's just a review of the edge switch, like a quick review. Uh, it's been kicking around the lab for a little while, and this is a lot of times what we use it for. Um, one, so we can test configurations on it, and not that there's a lot to configure, but sometimes people have some questions on it, or we just want to uh, build something out in the lab. Uh, and there are kind of handy little switches that we have deployed for some one-off jobs that, like I said, we're not managing the infrastructure of it, and we wanted something that's easiest to log into, for example, to manage a couple cameras uh, or and that need to be asked separate a couple of VLANs. But they're solid, they're reliable, we've never had a problem with them. Um, they're nice switches overall, but they're less recommended really for home users due to the fact that, um, well, unless you wanna learn some of that extra VLAN tagging, by the way, you can switch all that from the command line as well, so it is a great tool to learn on. But that being said, people who go, I just want it to work and I need something easy, I still push them over to the Unify line because, well, it's just it's easier for a lot of people, which is one of the reasons it's so popular um, as a system. But it's not a bad switch at all. I do recommend it, and I'll leave a link, uh, fill, affiliate link below where you can get one. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.